and mistreatment of prisoners of war was proof of the evils of communism. The gruesome experience of Korea confirmed to many in the U.S. that the spread of communism was to be prevented at all costs. Throughout the 1950s, the inherent duty of every honorable American was to be anti-communist. This is Side Views on the News, stories of the unusual and the commonplace. At the present time, I'm in the home of Mr. C.T. Overstreet, who is the foster father of James Joseph Dresnock, the 20-year-old PFC who reportedly, or we probably should say allegedly, has defected to the North Korean communists. What can you say after 43 years? I remember it very well. What kind of a boy was he growing up? He was a normal boy, average boy. Sometimes he was mischievous, but you could always find a tear of repentance in his eye. I was the son of a worker's family. My father was a worker, my mother was a housewife, and they fought like cats and dogs. She wanted to be free, so we left. She stayed in the bars and on the streets day and night. We slept, eat, and drank everything in the backseat of the car. They found her in Atlanta, Georgia. We returned back to Richmond. My father had to find a wife to take care of two children. So he sent my brother to my grandfather. He went there and I went to my aunt's house. They didn't really want me. So I kept running away. I wanted to go home. They told my aunt, there's no need for you to take care of him anymore. You will take him home this Sunday. I walked in the house. This new wife hollered, oh, you ain't have but one son. Where did this one come from? They have an old folks home in the city itself, and they took me there. My father told me he would be back, but I never saw him again never laid my eyes on them. And then my orphan life began, which was a living hell. I learned one thing, wherever I went, it was still the same. I wanted to run away. I wanted to go far. So I stole about $20 and a bicycle. I was taken to court. I was on parole for six years. A juvenile delinquency school was not considered suitable for me. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. This is Glen Allen, Virginia. Old man Overstreet's house. Joe was not an adopted child. But you raised him for a number of years. Yes, as we have many others. He came into the home and I was appointed his buddy. And went upstairs, showed him where his beard would be, where he could put his clothes. And we just hit it off. I don't know. I, don't know. I really didn't know any other yet why we hit it off so well. That's Sonny Jeter. How people can change. Mr. Overstreet told me that he was affectionately known to his foster children as Big Papa. And I think we can certainly appreciate that. Big Papa was a Presbyterian preacher. He opened his home to these kids and we really had no way else to go. He was fair, stern. If you did wrong, you got punished. But back in the 50s, Everybody got punished. That's hard to explain people to To be young and have absolutely nothing. Nothing. He had nothing really to call his own but what was on his back. And he may have just taken them off somebody's clothesline. Just to have some on his back. Joe has been carefully raised to be a full-fledged American. He was bitter against communism and that as long as he lived, he wanted to fight communism.
Dresnok was not only a child of the Cold War, but also a child of the South. He enlisted for military service on his 17th birthday. The Army at that point was the only option for a, for a kid with little or no education living in, uh, in the circumstances in which he found himself. The military in general is a, a place in which an awful lot of kids in Dresnik's situation have found their salvation, have found their, their way. And it provides uh, a father figure for kids who lack that. I thought I'd be a freer man, but really, you're not. It's tighter. I said, Joe, it's going to get straightened out now. At least in the military, he could get some training, some education. I thought he was really on the way. I think he did today. On leave from basic training, Dresnok proposed to a girl he recently met in church. Marriage would help erase the memories of his childhood abandonment. Getting married, good idea. So I went out to the home, and he got married in the living room, big pop married him. Joe in his army uniform, big pop, the master of ceremony. Yes, that's where I married Kathleen Marie Ringwood. I thought it was the marriage. Okay, Joe's got that mate. He's got what he needs. I sure wish it had him. Dresnok soon received orders to his posting in West Germany. By the time he returned, he discovered the two years serving his country overseas had taken its toll on his marriage. Sorry, Joe. They got me a new lover. I was clean for two years. Two years I didn't put my hands on a prostitute or any girl. For the simple fact that I loved her. She ran off. I think she took his heart with her. I think he was just totally broken hearted. I'm only glad of one thing. She didn't become pregnant. Why I swore in my life I'd never leave my children. With his marriage over, Dresnok immediately re-enlisted. In May 1962, he was posted to South Korea. The time I left Richmond, I was fed up. I didn't want nothing. If I died or lived, I didn't care. The Korean War, still fresh in everyone's memories, had to all intents and purposes never ended. The armistice had established the demilitarized zone, the DMZ, a 2.5 mile deep buffer filled with landmines that ran the 150 mile width of Korea, cutting off north from south. But the peace remained fragile and mutual hatred continued to exist along the 38th parallel. It seemed inevitable that sooner or later one side would invade and enforce its system and ideology on the other. 